One was would become the father of evolution, the other destined for a tragic death. Sandra Dick finds a new book sheds light on a fascinating chapter in the life of Charles Darwin. The young man who would become the father of evolution settled down to listen to his Edinburgh University lecture and was not terribly impressed. In his opinion, Edinburgh's powerful and acclaimed professor of natural history, Robert Jameson, was a rather dreary speaker. Charles Darwin just 16 years old and following in his father's and grandfather's footsteps studying medicine at Edinburgh University, was bored. The old, brown tri-stick Jameson, complained Darwin. His lectures, he wrote, were incredibly dull. The sole effect they produced on me was the determination never as long as I lived to read a book on geology or in any way to study the science. It was 1825, Edinburgh was still flushed from the intellectual boom of enlightenment and university lecturers wielded influence and power. Criticism would not be welcomed, and definitely not by Professor Jameson, with a reputation to uphold and no time for cheeky upstarts, particularly one fearless student with an enthusiastic interest in expounding alternative theories to his. Darwin, of course, went on to seal his place in the history books seemingly airbrushing over any influences the city's great minds may have had on his theories on the way. However, the outcome for his fellow Edinburgh University student, the outspoken Henry H. Cheek, who shared his lack of enthusiasm for Professor Jameson, would end in tragedy. Now the fascinating connection between Darwin, the unfortunate Cheek, Edinburgh's powerful university community and a host of larger-than-life characters including infamous anatomist Robert Knox, whose dealings with murderers Burke and Hare would stain his name forever, has been explored in a book which unravels an extraordinary period in Edinburgh academic history. In it, author Dr. Bill Jenkins' laborious research sheds light on Darwin's brief but significant studies in Edinburgh, in an era when the dying embers of the Enlightenment were still igniting scientific thinking, and when some of the brightest minds were exploring groundbreaking ideas on evolution and natural history. Although Darwin's time in the capital city was fleeting, he quit after two years going on to airbrush the period from his life's work, Dr. Jenkins concludes there can be little doubt that feverish debates surrounding the transmutation of species that swept drawing rooms, lecture halls and student gatherings laid the foundations for the scientists' theories and his work, Origin of Species. And he uncovers a remarkable moment in time that unveils the cutthroat and often vicious academic world behind one of the world's great seats of learning and the gulf that separated students see for more on this story, visit the news article link.